So we normally think about prescribed fire being beneficial as forage for livestock and cattle in particular, um, but there's also a lot of benefits uh, for pollinators. So we're here at the Stillwater Research Range and we're standing in a plot that was burned um, a, few, a few weeks ago, so in uh, mid-March. I mean, you can see the vegetation's recovered pretty quickly um, and we've got some uh, flowers uh, coming back. So a lot of the forbs or the wildflowers uh, will bloom following a prescribed fire. Um, it also opens up uh, the vegetation some for, for example, ground nesting bees. So if we think of uh, native bees, about 70% are gonna be ground nesters. And so they need some bare ground to be able to nest in. So this would provide a good nesting habitat for them as well. Uh, so there's been a lot of concern about pollinators in recent years. Uh, so there's been documented declines in a lot of native bees and kind of the native bee community in general. Uh, there's concerns about honeybees uh, with colony collapse disorder, um, and then also concerns about other pollinators. For example, uh, monarch butterflies are currently being considered for, for listing under the Endangered Species Act. And so if we think about resources for pollinators, and in particular where we are here in the Southern Great Plains, uh, grasslands are a lot of the habitats that we're thinking about. Um, and so any type of management activity that's going to promote the forb or wildflower community and to so prescribe fire uh, would have a, a great benefits for pollinators in terms of promoting uh, those wildflowers. And so if we think about um, butterflies, for example, uh, they'll need host plants uh, that, that they will lay their eggs on so that the caterpillars consume. And so prescribed fire has that benefit of promoting um, host plants um, and then also nectar sources. And then if we think about native bees, they're also going to need pollen as well as nest sites. And so uh, prescribed fire will promote all of, all of those things that we, we need for pollinators at different stages in their, their life cycle. So patch burning seems to work best. So that's on a, um, at the Stillwater Research Range, that's on a three-year interval. And that timing uh, works well for promoting resources for pollinators. Um, if you burn too frequently, um, you might be removing some of those forbs. So the, the um, you know, every few years. I um, mean, if we think about uh, prescribed fire um, improving forage quality, we can think about that from the host plant perspective for uh, butterflies too. Um, that's one thing we're interested in looking at more is kind of the tissue quality of those host plants. So it might have some of the same benefits for um, those caterpillars as it does for, for cattle. Um, so I think overall, in terms of providing a high quality uh, grassland habitat, uh, prescribed fire, which, which would have occurred historically, uh, has a lot of benefits. And it's one of the easiest ways to deal with, for example, brush encroachment. So if you have a lot of uh, cedar encroachment and establishment of cedars, you're losing a lot of your grassland habitat. Um, and so this is a, uh, one of the more cost-effective ways to, to deal with some of that brush encroachment and have the added benefit of promoting uh, the forb or the wildflower community.